Well, today on the workbench, you can see I've got a conglomeration of different pieces here. And you can probably already guess what I am going to work on. This is not my idea. It's not a new idea. But I just thought I'd kind of take a swing at it. Uh, I'm going to make a static grass applicator and I know these things go anywhere from 40 bucks, 200, 250, depending on the brand you buy. Today we're going to make one, and we'll probably have uh, eight dollars in it. <laughs> so what we're going to start with is an electric fly swatter. This is from Harbor Freight, item number six two. 540. Harbor Freight does carry two of these. They have two different models. One of them, and this one, is the double A model. The other model they have takes, uh, I believe they take, it takes D batteries, D size batteries. But this is the one they had at the local Harbor Freight. So, you know, and this thing I think was three dollars and then you can get a 20 percent coupon off so if you mess it up you're out eight bucks no big deal so anyway well at least three for this thing but in but here we go i did have to open that because my filming space here isn't real big um let me just go through some of the other parts of course we have the electronic fly swatter simple on off got a little red LED there it'll tell you if you've got your button pushed uh, does take two two AA batteries no big deal and I think I, I hate to quote the spec on this I think it said in the description, this thing puts out 13,000 watts. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to look it up again. But it will scare you. <laughs> if uh, if you do touch it, it will, if you're not expecting it, it will spark. So we've got the fly swatter. We'll be taking that apart. Uh, when we take that apart, we have to fill in this gap right in here. And what I'm using for that, and you'll get a better idea of it when I get that apart, uh, this is a plastic cutting board. Uh, you can get these at any kitchen store. And I think I bought a three-pack of them. They're probably $8 for three of them. So, like I say, you've probably got maybe $3 in this piece. And you can get a lot of uses out of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm trying to get over some sinus stuff. Uh, but one of the boards that came with this, I used it to mount my uh, uh, PR3, Digitrax PR3, my Loke Sound uh, decoder tester, and the programmer on. So you can, you know, mount some other stuff on this, use these for other things. So we'll get a piece of that cut, and then the other thing we'll need is some type of a, a strainer. And this, this isn't an expensive item either. I think this was $2.50 from the local Wally World. So we'll go ahead and we'll tear this thing apart, take the handle off of it, have to straighten that out probably and we can leave these on that way we can hang it up whatever we want to do with it uh, just need a piece of piece of wire a couple pieces of wire this is a let me get it right here I don't want to tell you wrong uh, and I'm gonna have to get out a magnifier to see what gauge this is Uh, 
22. 22 gauge wire. We'll have a couple pieces of that. Plus we'll have a alligator clip. And all that stuff is easily accessible. Nothing big here. So I guess our first step will be to disassemble the fly swatter. And it's no big deal. Just got a few Phillips head screws here. Get this thing apart. Now I'm not going to be able to show all of the process for this because when I go and cut my uh, piece for piece of uh, cutting board. So we'll, I'll be back. So we'll get this apart. Got, there's five screws in it. No big deal. Pull that out. Get that out of there. Let's see now. There's three of them. Put that back over. There's all five of those. And then we just gotta cut cut our little sticker there. And then this thing, yeah, watch that button, it'll come out too. And so there's the top part of it there's our little red button basically all we have is this board or the fly swatter part looks like a tennis racket we can cut that off cut that off and the only thing we have to do to wire that is all we need is two wires but I'll end up taking all, all three of these off soldering my own on it and then install the batteries and we're good so I'm gonna go down and cut our piece of cutting board and then we'll be back to install this thing all right we're gonna try something here I don't know whether this will work or not but I'm going to take, and this is the shape for the fly swatter. I've got it marked out. So what we'll do is set that on there. I'm going to take my center punch. And I'm going to center punch each one of those holes. And then I can take... A 964 drill bit and I'll just kind of start that because I actually need to use a little bigger one I just want to get these started Try not to hit the corner with the drill. Then we'll go to a quarter inch bit, which is the size of the hole. Well, that's a little bigger. That's what we want. That all chucked up in there. Three 
nice clean holes. And then we can come in. That slips right in from the bottom. Or slips in from the top. And now I'll go ahead and cut this out. I'll cut it a little proud. And uh, that way I can put it on my sander and sand sand it down to the shape we need so I'm going to use a coping saw here and this doesn't cut hard There, and I put the camera twice, and there's our piece. So now, what we can do with that is. I'll have to clean that up when I put it on the sander. But this is going to be what we're going for. That'll snap into that. Tuck these wires in. And then that'll go back together like that. And we'll sand this to shape, make it look kind of pretty, and then we can move on. Okay, now we're here at our little drill press, and we'll take and we'll sand this down. you for a second. I'm going to clean that sanding drum off a little bit. It's losing some of its bite.
close. I think we're good to go there. We've got our shape down. Now we can do the other things we need to do. Alright, so now we can take and cut the plastic off of the strainer. But first I want to try something here just to see how much yeah. I'm not going to try something because that won't come out. Uh, we'll just take a pair of lineman pliers and snap the handle off. Now we've got we're left with this, and we just got to put that into that. So let's remove that. And we'll see what we have here. <sighs> and when you know it, the way that works out, it's right. Well, that would work. I can go right between the screws and not hit any of them. Okay. Now I just got to make a a channel in that. Well, let me let me do it this way. I'm gonna straighten these out, and it'll be easier, I think. So let me try to straighten my wires out. There's partially straightened out. I think that'll work a little better. I'll straighten them out a little more. And then take this bend out up here. Got it kind of like that. And this doesn't have to be pretty. Okay. 
Now what I can do is I need to cut a channel in that. to get around all that so let me kind of mark what I want to do here break out the sharpie and I'm going to cut on or drill this on the outside of those lines I'll try to I may end up changing the shape of that a little bit but let me drill this out okay we're back here I've got the piece milled out and rearranged the wire a little bit so we'll go ahead and kinda temporarily snap this together so there's that part and then we've got our top and let me pan up here a little bit This is the beginning or middle of our static grass applicator. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it will work. So back to the workbench. All right, we're back. We've got our screen in. So now we'll take all of this I don't know what it is about the ends on these things, but they want to stay. It's a good thing, I guess. But anyway, now we'll work on our electronics. So let me get, get the soldering gun all heated up. I'll remove these two sets of wires. Now one, I'll have an alligator clip, piece of wire, and that'll run to one side. I'm going to put it over here on this side. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll break out the Dremel, and we'll put a notch in here. That'll be big enough for that wire. If you can see that little notch right there in the side. And then we have to fasten another piece of wire to this side. So we'll just cut a piece. Doesn't really matter what gauge this is. This is 22 gauge wire that I'm using here. And I'll take and strip the end off. And I'll take and tin that up. Break out the flux. Grab my solder. So that ends tinned up. And then I 
want to put that on this side over here. Ooh. And so, I don't know how well, if at all, this will solder to this metal. I'm not sure what this metal is, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to use a different kind of flux. This is an acid flux. And it works a little better, I think, on some of the other metals. If this was copper, I wouldn't have to worry about it. But the bad thing is, if you don't clean it up, it will eat through the wire after a period of time. So, clean the tip off on that. I'm going to try and heat that up and see if I can get anything. No, that, that takes solder right now. So, <laughs> that's really great. <laughs> surprised me so it's not steel some kind of a pot metal but now what I'll do is to seal that up let's take a couple pieces of heat shrink and I'll put over that but first since I said we need to clean that up break out some rubbing alcohol close that before I spill it all over the place got some rubbing alcohol q-tip And we'll clean that off just a touch. So there's that. Make sure that's dry. Then we'll slide our... Well, a bigger piece of heat shrink. Slide that on. Slide it over our wire. Break the soldering tip back out. Heat that up. Make a nice clean joint. Okay, now we'll take, move some of the stuff out of the way. Pull that off of there. I'm going to keep that like that. I'm going to break out the super glue. Get a nice big glob of that in there. And then... Let's 
some accelerator. That stuff smells like bug spray. <laughs> but that sets that uh, CA glue up instantly. And, of course, now I'm not... Uh, well, this is the product I use. Let's just say that. And you really can't see that. Let me get that out of the way. NCF Quick. Get it from Woodcraft. But that sets that up. That is completely set right now. That's not going anywhere. Then we'll take... Put that back in there. Now I can... I'll cut this wire off. Cut that off and strip that. flux on there. Solder that up. Not enough solder. There's that. And just case we'll put a little flux on that I'm gonna put a little more solder on it and stick that right down through There's that. Now all we've got to do is put in our ground. Let me strip that off. And right back to the flux. a little bit there's that put a little flux down here on this board just so we won't be able to pull the cable out. Okay, there is our electrical connection, that's all there is to it, put that wire in there, we'll put this thing back together, there 
there's that. There's that. Get a couple of screws in here. When I say a couple, I mean five. two up front. <laughs> and there is our completed Static grass, static applicator, static grass applicator. Yeah, that's what I mean. All right, well, we'll put some batteries in it and we'll test it out. All right, I've got a piece of uh, white foam out here and we're going to try this thing out. Uh, this is what I'm using it's the Woodland Scenics Static Grass Flock, and I believe this stuff is uh, two two millimeters so it is really really fine um, but anyway what we'll do just for a quick demo is this is some glue it's 50 50 water and uh, water and glue Get that spread out some. And I may have put too much in here. I think that'll work. So then we'll take. grounding clamp put it over here and you want to be as close to the grounding clamp as you can when you start spreading your grass seed out or flocks out so let me dump some of that We'll just put a little bit in our basket and we'll turn that on and I'm going to try and zoom in. I don't know if that'll get that or not, but I've got that turned on and you can see that. You can see how that static's working at the bottom of that. So we'll go in here, get this area on there. Don't touch your grounding clamp with the metal screen because it will spark. Like I say, there's not enough amperage here to kill you, but you'll know it. Like I say, this is only a two millimeter mix. I'm trying to get all that out of there. I 
and I'll get this, I'll lift this thing up. Let me pull this grounding clamp out. And I've got that shut off. Let me hold this up here. If you can see that. Now if that was dry. Oop. I may have to put it in through the magnifier. But that is standing up. That's really hard to shoot. Let me let me put it in the magnifier. Okay, and we'll try to get this focused. But you can see it's kind of laying a little bit of it every way, but it is standing up. And I've still got a lot of excess on there. When that dries, I'll knock it off. But let me do that. Let me let that dry, and then we'll get another shot of it. Okay. That's dried. I've knocked the excess off. And you can see the fibers standing up on that right there. So. But it does work for 8 bucks. I don't think you can beat it if you want to try to put some static grass down the most expensive thing you'll have is the static grass itself but you can see that clearly there where it's standing up so let me get a little figure here and stand in it okay so just for a little reference that is an in scale buck so this in, this uh, two millimeter stuff would work really well with your end scale, but that just wanted to show you that just for a little visual effect. All right, thanks for watching.